millions of Christians are dying all over the world and they're going through tribulation and it's coming here because you're importing them here and when you have a, a 50 million Muslims here you got to build 50 million houses who's going to pay for it the Saudis yes because if their plan is to make America Muslim they got the troops coming in they have to build houses America will be happy to build houses for them and you'll have the strongest dollar and the greatest prosperity in this country in maybe a hundred years the only problem is when you sell your soul to the devil, then comes payday. And so what I'm saying is the churches must be aware of a threat to Christianity, to Judeo-Christian America. But it's not Judeo-Christian America anymore. Obama said it in his uh, speech, in his inaugural speech, America today is a Christian, Muslim, comma, Jewish, Hindu country. So isn't that wonderful America, one nation under God and Satan? Ah, because Allah say, you know what, I, I'll have to tell one joke. And this is the reason I got a three-year jail sentence in Switzerland. I told this joke every night in Switzerland and on TV. What's the difference between neurotic people and psychotic people? Neurotic people dream about castles in the air. Psychotic people live in castles in the air. And psychiatrists collect the rent. Adolf Hitler was psychotic because he thought he could conquer the earth and he thought he could kill the Jews. Now, can anyone conquer the earth? Only the Lord has dominion over the earth, amen? Persians, Greeks, Romans, Mongols, Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin, all psychotic, thinking they could conquer the earth. Secondly, he thought he could kill all the Jews. Can you kill all the Jews? Now, if you're a believer, Jew or Christian, then you believe in Jeremiah 31, 35, which says there will be no more Jews on the earth when the moon, the sun, and the stars stop shining. It means there'll always be Jews. And you better pray for the Jews. Because then the world goes if they go. Okay. But Two-thirds of the human race, or five-sixths of the human race, are pagan, Hindus, Buddhists, and Muslims. Good people. I don't hate them. I love them. I have to love every human being created in the image of God. But if they don't believe in God, they don't believe in the Bible, but they all know the Jews have been scattered to the four corners of the earth. Amen? So if they've been scattered to the four corners of the earth, if you can't conquer the earth, psychosis number one, you can't reach the Jews to kill them, psychosis number two. What does Islam believe? Psychosis number one is going to conquer the earth. Psychosis number two is going to kill all the Jews, which makes Islam as psychotic as Nazism. But unlike Hitler, Islam has the plan to kill two billion Christians, psychosis number three. One billion Hindus, psychosis number four. Two billion Buddhists, psychosis number five. Now, I recommend to the Muslims not to mess around with the communist Chinese. Communist Chinese know what to do. They don't have the ACLU. <laughs> psychosis number six is that one sixth of the human race can kill five sixths of the human race and get away with it. Psychosis number seven, after the one sixth kills the five sixths, then the one sixth kills each other, Sunnis versus the Shiites. And Islam is a religion of peace when there are no more human beings left on the face of the earth. <laughs> and it's coming here. And then of course psychosis number eight, when you die for Allah, you get 72 virgins. Now, you told me that's not a psychosis. I can't manage in one life. I don't know how they marry four. Seventy-two virgins would be hell. One last very, very tea party joke. Osama bin Laden dies for Allah. And he goes up to heaven and he's waiting for his 72 virgins. Who shows up? George Washington. Beats him up. After George Washington, Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death, shows up and beats him up. President Adams shows up and beats him up. And then a whole line forms of 70 tall strapping six footers to beat him up. So he goes, he says, wait a second, I'm going to Allah's office. We got all eternity here for this. Goes to Allah's office, you promised me 72 virgins. He says, no, silly, you weren't listening. I said 72 Virginians. <laughs> what chance is there of immigration getting close to the Muslims? I need to understand that. Can you repeat that? I do better without this thing. Can y'all yeah. hear me back there? Yeah. Is that going? No. Yeah. Oh, Just moving away a little bit. What chance is there of immigration being closed to the Muslims? Okay. Um, that's a very, very hard question to answer because, of course, America believes in political correctness and receiving all the peoples. The problem is not the people. The problem is the system. How many people heard of Tom Tancredo from Colorado? And Tom Tancredo, I'll never forget this, right after 9-11, he said, one more 9-11 attack, we nuke Mecca. 
No, I never sent the nuke back. I don't believe in that. But I have in my sixth book the solution. My sixth book talks about the conquest of Mecca by Judeo-Christian forces. You know when? When the Al-Qaeda comes home to roost in Saudi, and they kill the king, and they kill the royal family, they blow up the oil wells to deny the Christian economy the oil, then the one world government, commonly known as the harlot riding the dragon, says no way, Jose, and Saudi Arabian oil fields get secured by allied forces. Uh, when that happens, they're gonna demand that Israel participate, Israel will be commanded to take northwestern Saudi. My book talks about the book of Exodus in the Bible, but it shows that we were there and we're coming back. When we take Mecca, one and a half billion Muslims will rise up to march on Israel. So when we take Mecca, I'm not saying we should do it. I'm saying we will have no choice at some stage but to do it. We should declare martial law and curfew, keep the Muslims in their homes. I think there are two million people in Mecca. Keep them in their homes and overnight bring in lasers and vaporize the black stone. The black stone is the vortex of all the evil on the face of the earth. You get rid of that black stone, there will be no more Allah. And it's a very hard story to explain, but what I'm thinking eventually is the Muslims who do come to the shores of America must all choose between Judaism and Christianity. And if the rabbis, Jewish rabbis, don't want them to convert to Judaism, I will work with every Christian leader to convert them to Christianity. And same in Israel. Because Islam is not a religion, it's criminal psychosis. That's why I got a three-year jail sentence in Switzerland. And I stand for that. Somebody's got to stand for it. Next question. Is it true that young Jews today do not know their history, are not religious, and do not care about the future of Israel? Uh, I would say as a generality, yes. Like I said before, 85% of American Jews have never gone to Israel. There are a number of philanthropists like Bronfman and Adelson and others who give a lot of money to a program called Birthright. And my son, Aaron, is CEO of Lipkin Tours. By the way, if you have groups that want to come to Israel and you want to see where the Bible actually took place, you come with Lipkin Tours. He used to work for Birthright 15 years. And these Jewish philanthropists have given billions of dollars to provide free air travel to Jewish kids to come to Israel to see something otherwise they'd never go. And like I said, one, two, three generations from now, the Jews will be intermarried completely with the Christians. And so I think that, not that it's bad, but I think that God has another plan. I think God is going to scrape up the Jews and the Christians who are together and send them to Israel. Uh, if I can quote the Bible, Hosea 11 verse 10 says, My children Ephraim will come home trembling from the west as the Lord roars like a lion. In other words, in my opinion, Christians, the, the Christians will remain here. The Christians will go through a tough time, but the Christians will come out on top. America must always be world power number one. But God is sovereignly going to move a tremendous population of Jews and Christians back to the land. And I predict the political party that I'm founding very soon will become the biggest party in the Knesset when all these 10 million people come home. That's when the Messiah shows. Express to us your opinion of John Hagee and his friendship with Israel. Of course, I can't say anything but praise. Uh, Hagee is a tremendous guy, he's a tremendous leader, he's doing remarkable things for Israel. I wish we had another hundred or thousand pastors like him. Do you think at some point Israel will strike the nuclear facilities in Iran? Yes. My last question is, will you please comment on the Muslim growth at the continent of Africa? Very good question. In my very first book, 1997, Is Fanatic Islam a Global Threat? I document Gaddafi's plan to make Africa the first entirely Muslim continent in the world. And uh, praise God, Gaddafi is not there anymore. I know that uh, what is replacing him is not good either, but Gaddafi is responsible. I don't know how many people here have heard of countries like Ivory Coast, Liberia, Nigeria, a whole bunch of countries in Equatorial Africa have had terrible, costly civil wars in which hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, have been slaughtered by the Muslims who came down from the north, armed and trained by the Libyans. But like I said before, most people in America, including the American black population, they don't care about the blacks in Africa, just as the Jews in America don't care about Israel, nor did they care about the Jews of the Holocaust. American Jews didn't move a finger for the Jews in Europe. They were too afraid for their own position. There was some anti-Semitism in the 30s and 40s. Uh, where we are today is a very, very critical um, 
the watershed, and we're going now into a remarkable time. But I think I, I will conclude by saying one thing: that this generation has seen more fulfillment of Bible prophecy than any other generation in the last 2,000 years. Thank you very much. God bless America.